Tony Petrucci is in studio with us this morning. How you been, Tony? Good. Good to see you, buddy. Good, good, good. This segment of our show brought to you this morning by Craig Blair for State Senate and by L.A. Roberts Jewelers in downtown Martinsburg, where you can get that special someone, that special something. All right. Uh, we have uh, the Admiral, Bill Stubblefield. Good morning Tony's again, Rob. author, Johnny Gilstrap. Good morning. I hope we teach kids still these days around this area how much history is here and how much of what the United States is today was formed by what happened here back in the mm-hmm. 1860s. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Gene Meyer there with uh, our last uh, guest there and the story of John Brown's raid yeah. from the five uh, African-American soldiers in his company who helped in the raid. Uh, this is uh, Tony Petrucci's time now, the clerk of Berkeley County. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. We've got a couple of different forms for you today that we're going to follow. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, the Republicans recently voted to close their primary, but that won't kick in until 26. We're going to talk to you about changing Correct. registration and such in a moment. But Mr. Gilstrap texted me when he was stranded in Las Vegas and said, you know, I've been inundated with these ads for title fraud insurance. Is this an issue in Berkeley County? I, as we were talking earlier, I haven't heard anything about it yet. Uh, it, it could be. Um, I'll, you know, do a little bit of uh, investigation uh, in the office, uh, but I haven't had any... Any is there a practical is there a practical mechanism according to these commercials that you hear and some other run here um it's as easy as taking a single piece of paper and they they forge my signature and they can change the ownership of my house through the clerk's office I, and it's it just seems I, so ridiculously I, fragile the way it's presented by would, people I, who want me to buy Dave, something. Dave Ramsey runs ads for that too on yeah. his show. I wouldn't think it's just a matter of a signature. I, I think there's some protection there that uh, for the homeowner, it, it, it almost would have to be, I would think. But, you know, I haven't heard anything about it, so I'll check into it. Maybe right. next time but, I want to let you know. But how does the title change, Tony? This is kind of the root of it. If I sell my house to somebody, what steps do I have to go through? How are you notified? And well, what's the process? Of course, it's all handled by through your lawyers first, you know, if you, you have your, your lawyers involved, they, they do all the title search um, and set up an appointment for you and the, the owner that purchased your home or if you're or whatever. And then it's uh, it's once that's all put together through the through the lawyer office, it, it comes to us to get recorded. That's all we do is record that deed. That's it. But I, you know, as far as any protection, uh, yeah, you know, or, or or issues that you're talking about, I haven't heard anything about it. Let me walk down another path. We want to come back to this just sure. a second. But Tony said something that uh, tweaked my interest. Uh, m- over the years, many records have been lost because of a courtyard, a courthouse sure, fire. Sure. Uh, I know a few years ago, Berkeley County started a digitization of all the files. Yes. Where are we now? Have all the files been digitized? Well, no. I mean, it's it's we're working on it. it it's going to take several years to do that. Uh, we talked about that uh, during the. Uh, when I was running, you know, we're looking probably five to six years to try to get that, as as you know, when Mr. Yeah. Sign was there with the circuit clerk. So we're working on that every day, uh, putting old records on on uh, e-file. And, Are you doing that internally, or yeah. do you having a group? No, we're, we're, we're able to do that cross tra- Different people each day do different things with that. So we haven't hired anybody uh, outside the uh, system to do that now. Yeah, uh, is it as simple as just uh, digitizing a piece of paper, or do you have to go in and do a justification or registration of the document? It's fairly simple. Um, you know, once you have the old document, um, you have to index it first. Yeah. And then you scan it. And then that's basically it. But when you and I were county commissioners mm-hmm. sitting together, uh, we did a major push to yes. get all the records. But we brought someone in from the outside yep. of working with Gary Wine, yep. and we took care of every every office, all the records in every office, with the exception of the county clerk. Correct. Yeah, and and we're behind, I think, yeah. because of yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, but we're working on it uh, daily as we speak. Um, and once we get over into the new building the new dunn building which looks like it's probably going to be about may um we'll have uh, a better feel for it 
we're, we're, we're working on issues now, what's going to go with us over to the Dunn Building, which, you know, birth, marriage, death certificates, uh, a lot of the um, one vault that's used for the lawyers, will go, uh, all the, uh, the big books will go over there. Uh, we're only going to have so much room, and then we're going to have um, an area down at Baltimore Street, the, um, the old, I guess, perfection garment facility. They mm-hmm. per- yes. Where we'll have an area, pretty big area, 50 by 60, where it's going to be racked, that we can bring over what we don't think we're going to need um, on a daily basis for the public to be racked. Uh, and we're going to do it and, you know, and label everything. And if somebody needs something, we'll have to have one of our personnel take them over to that facility. How is that protected, both for security if somebody come in stealing the records or for fire or water damage? Well, it has, um, of course, there's sprinklers in there. Uh, every, you, you can't get in if you're, unless you're an employee of the county. Uh, for instance, I would uh, say, okay, Mr. Stubblefield, if you're working for the clerk's office, you, you're, you're in charge of taking that person over there to, to look whatever they want to look up. So it's not, it's not going to be haphazard to have it very organized through the maintenance department, and the um, county administrator has done a great job of, of working with that. So I feel comfortable. We have one room just for the, machine, uh, the voting machines, which is a um, 65-degree uh, room. These, these machines have to be um, at that temperature. So uh, I feel good about it, really. It's okay. a lot of I'm- work. I'm going to be that uh, uh, whipping a dead horse again. Mm-hmm. All the stuff going to the Baltimore Street, mm-hmm. uh, how much of that will be digitized and how much – and what's well, the schedule for the rest of it? Uh, some of it is so old, you, it's just – it's hard to be able to get the paper out. It's, 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 uh, it's not just something you can slide out with a clip. It's um, sewn in. So a lot of it won't be, but it'll be available to the public if they want to go back with some of these uh, uh, historical society people that look up things. So those we won't be able to do. It, it's, it will ruin them. They're too fragile. They're in too um, fragile of a state. Uh, yes. Uh, everything else, um, we'll, we'll be working on that to get it uh, on, on the computer. Scan. Okay. And even the ones we scan, we're going to keep the paper copies? Oh, yes. You have to keep uh, some things forever. Right. Yeah, there's something. And that's through the uh, Secretary of State's office. We have a person there we talk to. What can we dispose of after so many years, which isn't much, uh, um, and what we have to keep. Did I answer your question, Mr. Uh, Tubbs? Yes, you did. Uh, There's... We think of digitization of running it through a scanner, but you can also take a photograph Correct. and and then digitize a photograph. Exactly. So you can you can photograph some of these very fragile yes. pieces where yeah. you can act, not actually yes. take them out. Yeah, and some of some people do that. Yeah, some of the people but, that are interested. But I'm uh, uh, I'm struck by the what we had in Morgan County a few years ago, yeah. what ten or twelve years ago, yes, where the courthouse burned, and that unfortunately was not an anomaly. Yeah. We've been very fortunate yes, in Berkeley we County. We've never lost these records. Yeah. But, but, and I applaud you, and I applaud John Small for taking the initial steps. But I would feel most comfortable if everything is digitized. Well, it, it probably will be eventually. Okay. Probably not yeah. on my watch. Sure. Okay. Yeah. There's what happens in that circumstance? You've got these old properties that have been in existence, you know, been under one ownership for 100 years, mm-hmm. and then there's a fire, the deeds are gone, the records are gone. How do these people prove ownership of what they've got? It's a very good question. It's a very good question. Yeah, I mean, if, if it's lost, hopefully they'd have something at their home, uh, somewhere, but you know, in those type of circumstances, it wouldn't be good. Yeah, in the courts you could uh, you could resort to squatters' rights. They've been on. They've been uh, resident there for blank number of years. Mm-hmm. Therefore, you would not have. Yeah, to but have where is the property line? Yeah. You know, is it? Yeah. is it here or is it? Yeah. four hundred yeah. feet to the That's other side. It, it, and, it, and I'm sure it happens across the country. It must. Uh, but you know, we're, we're we're taking baby steps to get there. I mean, it's a it's a big process. Uh, over in the new structure, the Dunn Building. Uh, the, the, there'll be, be fireproof uh, um, cabinets where we slide our things in and 
that type of thing. So um, feel good about that. With the growth of the county, is if new registrations, I presume, are mm-hmm. much are easier and up to date, and we can keep up with them. What we're really oh, yeah. worrying about is the historical stuff, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we're good there. Berkeley County Clerk Tony Petrucci, our guest here on the program. Tony, recently the Republican Party voted to close their primary. It'll kick in in the 26th election. A couple of questions for you regarding that. Uh, first and foremost, you are a Republican. I am. Formerly a Democrat. Yes, sir. Uh, this will cause some who want to make sure that they vote in the Republican primary who are not currently Republicans to switch their party affiliation, whether it's from Democrat to primary, independent, uh, Democrat to Republican or independent to Republican. Uh, one, what's the current breakdown in Berkeley County, Democrat, Republican, independent? And uh, have you gotten questions about this switch already? No, no, I don't think a lot of people know about it. Um, we have about 80 couple thousand registered voters. Um, and believe it or not, uh, there's probably 30 some thousand registered Republicans, um, close to de- Democrats are close, but they're they're back a little bit, probably ten thousand, and and a lot of them are independents or non affiliated, non affiliated, yeah, yes. because there is yeah, an independent yeah. party. Mm-hmm. So, so Republicans are still the um, the main thrust, mm-hmm. uh, if you want to call it that. But um, then you have the Democrats, and then as uh, Mr. Stubblefield mentioned, you have the non affiliated. So, but there's eight about eighty thousand plus. And there probably will be more uh, between now and April 23rd, which is the cutoff date. As a prominent Republican in Berkeley County, do you have an opinion on the decision by the party to close the primary? Well, I, ha- I haven't uh, really looked into it a whole lot. I think it's going to cause some issues in 2026 with the uh, uh, non-affiliated or the independent people that, that, that might switch back to Republican or are you gonna to have to develop some sort of plan to inform voters before oh, absolutely. the election? Absolutely. It's that that's gonna be the biggest thing I believe is getting them educated uh through you know uh, of course Facebook is always good, but you know, it's minimal. Um through train when we have our training process uh for elections we can we can push that. Uh I think the county commission needs to help a little bit with that also uh, throughout uh, their meetings if they if it's allowed I guess it is should yeah. be right yeah it is yeah. do we have a feeling historically what percentage of Republican primary voters or voters in the Republican primary are in fact there as non-affiliated is it a significant are we talking a lot of people here that are not affiliated right now yeah, well, historically, that have voted in, in well in, in the, the past. Primary. I'd say in the past five years, it's increased dramatically. Uh, there for a while, it was I, sort of stagnant. Yeah, I think there's another way you can cut this. Uh, the numbers I've seen approximately one third Republican, approximately yeah. one third Democrat, and one third non-affiliate. If you look at a given election. Most all the action is on the Rep- uh, on the Republican side. Very little action on the Democratic side. Mm-hmm. So I would wager to guess, John, that of that one third that is non affiliated, the vast majority of those vote in the Republican primary. How many votes do we get in a Republican primary? These, if, if we're talking about about approximately fifteen percent, twelve to fifteen percent of the registered voters. Okay. Yeah, it was very. It's it's maybe actually less than that for the primary. Uh, something yeah. like uh, t- ten to twelve percent of the registered voters in the primary. That's correct. A little correct. bit more it, in the general. It's very so. it's very minimal in yeah. primaries. Very. I mean, this one might be a little bit different mm-hmm. because of you know, players twenty twenty four. Yeah, but normally when you're off your elections. Um, we only had 15% people vote yeah. total of all the registered voters of uh, in 2022. And do we know how far in advance do the non-affiliated need to change to one party or the other before election day? Before a- election? April 23rd is the last day you can change. Okay. Now but, keep in mind you can vote yeah. in the Republican right. primary this time this around. Yeah, this time right. you're yeah. good. Yeah. You're, you're all right 2024. Yeah. But 2026, you, you unless something happens, you won't be able to. And how many do we turn away, the poll workers? Is it is it just a, a handful over the course of an election day? They show up and they're, they've got the wrong party. A Democrat shows up to vote in a, in a Republican primary? Well, um, 
they can still come in and vote, even if they're at the wrong precinct. But well, you know, it's a it's a thing called, you know. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm groping uh, for the word after uh, it's passed. Yeah. Every, nobody is turned away at the time. Yeah. They they will their vote will be flagged and then immediately following yeah. the, uh, the the vote, the county commissioners go in and justify the votes, and all of those that are flagged then will be looked at individually at that point at in time. At the uh, canvassing. Canvassing. Thank you, Tony. Uh, we have that. But, the, you know, you can vote, even though you're in the wrong precinct, but it's, uh, it's looked at later. It's <laughs> now, how many early voting sites will we have? Well, right, I'm glad you mentioned that. We have the, we have the one now at the uh, voter registration facility there on Dunn Building. Uh, ten days, early voting, ten days prior, May 1 through 11th, May 11th. Uh, we also have the South Berkeley substation. Uh, we have a little bit of maintenance to do there. The maintenance department's been very good working with me on that. And also uh, the Beddington Ruritan will have mm -hmm. open uh, from 8 to 5. All those places will be open 8 to 5 for 10 days prior to the uh, May 14th election. Is there any thought of having a th third one in Back Creek Valley? Not at this moment. Okay. Not at this moment. We, we, we try to get through this uh, first uh, the two additional, see what happens. And then we'll go from there. Tony, okay. is there an indication of what percentage of eligible voters are actually registered to vote in Berkeley County? No, I haven't seen that yet. I know uh, Brad Knoll posted on our uh, Facebook page, there's 130,000 residents approximately of Berkeley County, 80,000 registered right. voters. Right. And he put very sad, but I'm guessing some of that 50,000 difference is not of age to vote yet, too. Th that's correct. That's correct. Right. He's, he's probably close to that. I mean, I, I wouldn't. You have, to, you have to be saying. 18 to vote, so yeah, yeah. Some of that is, you know, 15 yeah. year olds, four year olds. Yeah, and, and, and absentee's been pretty strong. I mean, you know, you can do that way or earlier with absentee vote. If I vote absentee, mm -hmm. but then it turns out that I'm actually in the county the day of the election when I didn't think I would be, and I forgot I voted absentee, and I show up and I try to vote again, does something stop me from yes, doing that? Yes, it's you won't be able to vote. It's, it's recorded. Yeah, but there's one of the bills in front of the either the House or the Senate now that will put a very substantial penalty if you do that. Yeah, I haven't heard that. Uh, there you go. We're talking about jail. So, yeah, jail time. and pretty, So it's a, uh, I guess it's intended that if it's not a mistake, it's intentionally done. But Tony says there's a, a screening, but that's not 100%. So if yeah. you wanted to... We had one of the uh, one of the county commissioners a few years ago in Jefferson County that deliberately tried to vote twice yeah. to see if he'd get through the process, and um, he was caught. In those days, there was not I a significant that. fine. Yeah, I that. I he he was he was embarrassed, but there's no fine at the time. Isn't there also pending legislation to limit absentee voting to require a a reason? Yeah, there, well, very specific yeah. categories of reasons. Correct. They're, they're going to make that more strict. Yeah, it was, and it re relaxed substantially during pandemic. Yes. And uh, practically anybody could vote pandemic absentee, but there are very strict. One, you have to be in the military or have to have a certified indications if you're traveling on business and like it's It's a, except for the military, it's a fairly uh, steep curve you have to jump through. Tony, is... Mm -hmm. uh, the process to switch parties, something that can be done by mail, or do I have to do it in person? Either one. Either. Can it be done online? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Streamlined process, not difficult yeah, at all. Yeah, you can go to the Secretary of State's office and do that. Yeah, sure. And so, then so do they... they that, what's, well, yeah, I build, so what's sure. the follow-up process locally for you, then? Is well, it you, you, more labor? Just, what was that? Does that create more, more labor in your office once I switch not, parties? Not really. No, you can come in... Uh, and change that any time you want to April 23rd. If everybody waits until April 23rd? Yeah, is it, it seems... Because um, there was some concern that, about that, this when this well, was first what, done. What, right now, we're open. I try, I'm try. i trying this. I don't know if it'll work or not. This whole month of February on Saturdays, the voter registration office is open from 9 to 2 if you want to come in and register or change your party. But we didn't get a, a big volume of people doing that which we didn't think we would mm -hmm. and if it doesn't work out after this after after february we don't get a lot of people we probably won't do it again um but it the thrust is closer to april 23rd mm -hmm. that's just what i've seen in the past that's when people I, I wait to the last minute and i don't think there's any won't be any change this year 
Tony, there's been some talk about moving the city's vote up very in line with the early vote in the Berkeley County. Is that still being discussed? I haven't heard that. Municipality vote. That generally was a couple of so weeks after the, the county's early voting. Yeah. So to save money, there's been some talk about combining the two. I haven't heard. Their, their election is June 11th. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't so heard. So a month after. Yeah. yeah, I haven't heard that. Right. Which we work, which we have a real good working relationship with the city now. That's good. I, I, I believe. I'm going to send you out with your theme song again here, Tony. Final thought is yours, sir. Well, we're out here to help the people to vote, to register, and we've, we've, we've given them the opportunity to do that, and I hope they take advantage of it. Thank you, Tony. Yep.